Hi everyone, in today's video we're going to talk about RGPA, a self-supervised method for images. We're going to run a single patch to test the architecture and see how the tensor changes shape inside the model. So let's get started. I have a board post that we will go through in this video. So I have the visualization of the architecture and I have the printouts after running a single batch. So we'll go through this blog post, but first let's go through the paper. The paper talked about joint embedding predictive architecture. And this is a term that you will usually hear in computer vision and specifically in self-supervised methods joint embedding architecture these are GIA and the generative architectures and the joint embedding predictive architecture and these are the JPAs. For this video I'm looking at iJPA as an extension for Dino V1 and iBot. So here are the contributions they're saying that iJPA learns strong off-the-shelf representations without the use of handcrafted view augmentations. So they are masking they are using two encoders context encoder and target encoder. These are not called student and teacher uh, in iJPA they are called context encoder and target encoder and they are using predictor. This architecture is very similar to a BioL. Bootstrap your own latent and new approach to self-supervised learning. They are using two encoders and at the end of the first encoder they're using a predictor. It's kind of similar in iChipa. So two encoders and a predictor but it's the and, and bio -L, it's they are using augmentations and they are using cnn but here it's vision transformer and they are not using augmentations but it's the asymmetric design that makes it so close to bio -L more than dino v1 and ibot when I first read the paper, I, I was confused about the masking, how them they are masking. I understand the general idea. So the general idea is that you are hiding some tokens from the context encoder, but you're not hiding them from the target encoder, and you are making that context encoder try to predict the target uh, tokens. But what I didn't understand is the, is the masking. So I had to go to the GitHub repository and do like any programmer would do. Just download the GitHub repository and run a single patch and just put print a statement after each line of code just to see how the tensor changes shape. So that's what I, I did. Here is the code. The most important files are the train and source model vision transformer. So these are the two important files that we are going to uh, talk about in, in, in the code. So what I have done, I was thinking about, about downloading CFR10 and running CFR10 and optimizing the model based on CFR10. But then I thought about the dimensions and the resolution so specifically in the paper they are ask they are saying that they trained on 224 by 224 resolution so if i if i downloaded cfr 10 it will it will be a different resolution then i will be even more confused about the tensor shapes so i prefer to keep imagenet but i don't have imagenet downloaded so i went to this repository it's called imagenet sample images so basically for each one of these thousand classes they are picking one image as an example so what i have done i downloaded this repository put it here in ImageNet Mini and just created three dummy folders with the dummy class names just to trick the code to run because I'm not trying to optimize the model I'm just trying to run a print statement and see how the tensor changes shape inside the model so here in drain encoder and predictor these two this is encoder the context encoder encode the code was called encoder and this is the predictor and the target encoder is basically a copy of the of the encoder so these two have identical architectures they are passed two different stuff but they have the identi identical architecture of vision transformer so encoder is initialized to vit the model name and the predictor is initialized to vit vit predictor so vit is basically the vision transformer file this file here so for encoder we are passing the model name vit tiny vit small vit IT base large and huge we're passing this as a parameter for the predictor we are it has a different architecture and it's a class called predictor they have different architectures we will go through them by the print statements and you can see those print statements i'm not going to share this code because i'm i'm, I'm afraid that I, I broke some something along the way there are so many print statements i put in the code then the model starts the training loop by iterating over unsupervised loader so unsupervised loader has the masked predict these are for target tokens mask encoder these are the context tokens and the u data it's the images and this is the iteration so you can run the model using this command here i just configured this configuration file i didn't change much i just changed the the image folder change the root 
directory. I kept the resolution the same. I kept the batch size the same and all other parameters I kept them the same. So I have the printouts. So this is epoch one iteration zero. The length of the unsupervised loader is eight, eight batches each of size 128. The images shape is as you, uh, as you, as you expect, it's 128 images, three channels, 224 height, 224 width. For them, for the context tokens, we are passed in a mask of size 57. So for each image, we are pulling out 57 tokens. These are the 57 tokens. This is what we are going to pass to the context encoder. These ones here. And for the target encoder, it's of size 42. So it's less than 57. And these are the, it's a list of four tensors. These four, one, two, three, four. I'm also printing the target encoder and the encoder and the predictor architectures. I pasted these printouts in the blog post. We will go through the architecture in, in a second. So this is the train step. It performs a forward target with no gradient because you are not updating the target encoder using gradient. We are updating it using the exponential moving average. And uh, this is the forward context. So we're passing the images through the encoder Encoder, then we're passing them through the predictor and we are matching the Z which is the context output with the H which is the target output and a side forward target it's this print statement here then it goes to the vision transformer class to perform these printouts so this was a dummy run just running a single batch through the model and to get the printouts of the architecture and printouts of the tensor shapes I'll move to the blog post right now it's uh, much clearer to explain the architecture than the code but this uh, I was just uh, trying to show this is where I get the, the tensor shapes so this is the blog post I have the IGBA paper in a biptech format and I acknowledge the author's help for providing the code because uh, if the code wasn't there I, I had some difficulties understanding the paper so I have in the pod post I have the main architecture the target encoder architecture the context encoder the predictor and visualization of the loss and a printout for the first epoch to see how the tensor changes shape so let's start with the the main architecture here. So this is the input image. This is the target mask. They call it in the paper BI. And the context mask, they call it in the paper BX. So this is a 16 by 16 patches. And 32 patch. I'm just I'm just visualizing 32, by, uh, 32 tokens for the context mask. And 10 tokens for the target mask. But these are not passed in one tensor. These are passed in a list. Each mask is a tensor by itself and it will be concatenated with the context mask in the predictor vision transformer. We are passing the image, the whole image, to the target encoder, which has the encoder F theta bar. We are updating F theta bar using the moving average to get the representations S Y. But for the context encoder, we're not passing the full image. We're passing the masked image to train F theta and we're getting the representations from the mask, from the context from the context mask. Both encoders have identical architecture of VIT with N by N non-overlapping uh, image patches. They use 16, 16 by 16 tokens. So at the end of the encoder, we are passing the positions of target tokens. So the predictor G5 will try to predict S hat Y, these representations. And at the loss, we are computing the distance between S hat YI and S YI. For the target encoder, these are the images. We're passing the images through the ConvNet just to cut the image into, into patches and map the image from the RGB channels to the embedding channels. We will have 128 images by 256. These are 16 by 16 by 768. These are the embedding dimensions. We're going to add the position embeddings to the, this tensor here and we're going to apply the masks. But for the target encoder, if you go to the code, train, you see that we are only passing the images. We are not passing the mask. But for the context encoder, we are passing images and the mask. So inside vision transformer, it will check if the mask is not none, it will call apply mask. So this will not be called for the target encoder. So the tensor will have the same shape, we will, it will not be changed, and we are going to pass this tensor through the vision transformer layers. It's uh, 12 layers, each layer has the usual VIT architecture, attention block, then MOB block, and a layer norm at the end. So we are passing this tensor through 12 layers of VIT, and we are getting the representations out. For the current Text encoder, we're passing the images, we're patchifying the images to get this tensor, and we're adding the positional embeddings. And we will come here to the mask, but because we are applying the we are passing the masks, we will go to apply masks. Apply masks just 
just for visualization, I'm I'm using hundred for the context token for the context mask. So we are pulling hundred tokens and we're training the vision transformer using these hundred tokens. Only hundred tokens. We're not training the vision transformer on the whole image, just like in the paper. So this is what we'll be training on. One important detail about target encoder, the mission here in the appendix, masking as the output of the target encoder. An important important as a typo. An important design choice in IJPA is that the target blocks are obtained by masking the output of the target encoder, not the input. So they have here uh, a comparison between masking the output of the target encoder so you perform the masks to the encoded tokens or you perform the masks to the input the image the positions themselves the pixels themselves but they found that if they mask the output they would get better performance than if they mask the input the image itself now to the beef of IJFA the most important part is the predictor this class here vision transformer predictor it takes the output of the context encoder a list of the context mask and a list of the target mask it takes z which is the Output of the uh, context encoder, mask encoder, these are the context masks, and mask predictor, these are the target masks. First thing, it maps the context encoder output to the dimensions of the vision transformer predictor. So it maps from 768 channels to 384 channels. This line of code here, it will not touch the, the, the masks. It only produces the channels of the context encoder output. Then this is the, the most important part. So inside the forward function of vision transformer predictor, the predictor position embedding is repeated to match the batch size. So what is predictor position embedding? If you go back to the initialization function here, it's a parameter that was initialized to zero. Then there, then there is another variable that holds the sine cosine positional embedding of the image because all images have the same size 224 and 224 the positional embedding just like the vision transformer original paper the positional embedding is the sine cosine embeddings so we are based on the size of the image we are getting the sine cosine position embeddings and we're copying that to the predictor position and embedding so this is the predictor position and embedding this is inside the forward function it got copied to this to match the size of the badge let's remember this the predictor positional embedding this is one variable then there is another variable called positional embeddings it's this one we copy the predictor position embedding into this position embeddings then we apply the masks these masks these four masks then we stretched out this to match the length of the list so the length of the list is four one mask two three four we stretch this out to match that mask so at the end we will get 512 it's basically 128 this is the batch size multiplied by four so we replicate the images four times and for each batch of image we are applied the masks so the first 128 images have this mask the second 128 images have the second mask then all the way to the fourth mask and each mask is has the same size which is 50 these are the channel embeddings so what we have done is just repeating the images four times and we are pulling the positions so each image will have only 50 positions these are the sine cosine positions of the tokens that we are trying to predict then there is another parameter in the initialization function it's called mask token this mask token i forgot to mention that for the positional embeddings the gradient is turned off because we want to, we don't want to optimize for the positional embeddings we want them to we want to keep them fixed because we want to predict at the same location with every iteration but for the mask token it requires a gradient so we are optimizing the mask token while not optimizing the position and embeddings so this mask token also will be repeated at the same way it will be stretched out four times 128 times 4 and 50 is the number of tokens that we are trying to predict 384 is the predictor embeddings then we're adding the position embeddings to the predicting tokens but this will not change the size of the tensor now we're getting back to the context encoder output the context encoder output was 128 by 100 these are the mask the, the the context tokens that we we get from the context encoder by 384 channels so we are going to replicate these four times to match the target mask so this is what we are doing here we are repeating the context output four times then we are concatenating both so 100 tokens that we are getting from the context encoder and 50 tokens that we are trying to optimize based on the fixed positions so based on the positions we are trying we're training the network to predict the values of these tokens then we are passing this through the vision transformer layers the vision transformer layers for the predictor are 12 layers the attention block 
MLP block and at the end it has a projection layer that maps it from 384 which is the predictor embedding dimensions to 768 which is the embedding dimensions the main embedding dimensions for the context and for the target after running this concatenated tensor uh, through the vision transformer we are only pulling out the target tokens and we're projecting them back from 384 to 768 so the loss will be computed using these tokens. So this is the target encoder output 128, 256, it's the full image 16 by 16, patches by 768. These are the target encoder output and these are the predictor output that we are getting from the predictor, the vision transformer predictor. And we're subtracting these, we're, comp we're computing the loss for these. But the loss is uh, the smooth L1 loss that has two terms. If the difference between X and Y is less than beta, it will be squared. But otherwise, we'll just compute the difference between X and Y. So what's, what's the point of all of this? Why are we concatenating, masking, and running three vision transformers? It's all written in the paper. Recall the goal behind ITPA is to predict the target block representations from a single context block. So we are trying to make this vision transformer as powerful as possible to augmentation, to segmentation, to all kind of information loss from the image. This will make it very powerful for downstream tasks. That's it guys for today's video. I hope it was helpful. I'll make sure to put all the figures and all of the printouts in one blog post and share it with you guys in the description below. Thanks for watching. Bye.